The Umatilla Indian Reservation in Oregon is home to some beautiful scenery. But I'm a little nervous because I hear the main attraction around here is the wild horse. Now, if you know me, you know that horses and I do not get along. So I can only imagine how bad it would get if I got hooked up with a wild horse. Oh, so that's the wild horse attraction they're talking about. Well, that's not bad at all. I'm gonna try my luck. That was amazing. I must have won like a hundred million dollars in there. It's incredible. Hey, wow, Kunas, Lautiwa. You want to ride, man? I was gonna take a cab, but sure, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you a ride. Just throw your bag in the back. Hop in. Thanks, man. I have no luck when it comes to horses. I'm Don Kelly. And I'm what you call an urban native, a city-raised, office-bound Ojibwe. But I can't help hearing a call, a call from my elders telling me it's time to rediscover the old ways and get back to the land. Hello? Hello? Hello, I'm Don Kelly and welcome to Fish Out of Water in Oregon. I'm at the Umatilla Indian Reservation, and the plan is for me to learn the ways of the Cayuse, the Umatilla, and the Walla Walla. Now, I know that's a lot of names flying at you, but these three tribes decided to form a confederation, so just accept it. You know what has me really worried? I have enough trouble learning the ways of one people, so the odds of this experience overwhelming me are, oh, 100%. Thomas Morning Owl, yes. I want to thank you, first of all, for inviting me to your uh, your beautiful territory here, making me feel welcome. Where am I? All I know is I had to fly <laughs> a, a cross country and south or something. Where, where about well, are you uh, right you're out of the land of ketchup potato chips. You're down here in uh, <laughs> Umatilla right. country. This is a Umatilla Indian Reservation. We're Umatilla. located Umatilla, yeah. We're located in northeastern Oregon, about, about three hours east of Portland, probably the best way to describe it. Portland, I've heard of that. You've heard of that one. Umatilla isn't just one group, is it? Oh, no, no. There are three tribes on uh, this reservation. There's the uh, Cayuse, Cayuse, which is, this is their homeland, actually, the Cayuse homeland right here. Then the Umatillas and the Walla Wallas. This reservation was created by treaty in 1855. If there's three tribes, which which one are you? What's your I'm, a, I'm Umatilla. And Umatilla. I'm Umatilla. My mother's a Umatilla. You guys are from up north of 49th. Well, part of my blood is from there, too, and the, oh. on the blood reserve. Blood oh, reserve. the blood reserve, yeah, yes. out, uh, out so, in Alberta, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh, so you got the best of both worlds Best then. of both worlds, <laughs> I'll you tell go. you. So what were the Umatilla like? Well, what was their way of life? A lot of our livelihood in the in historical times was fishing. Our people roamed quite a bit, especially with the horses, with the advent of the horses. We had contact with the Crow Indians. We had uh, contacts with um, Blackfeet, Sioux, Assiniboines. So when we got that horse, our people were just very mobile. I'm a bit of a rambling man myself. Uh -huh. I get yeah. around. I'm yeah. a man yeah. of the world. So <laughs> you look skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what are the kind of things I could do to get a feel for the way of life down here? We're going to have you going out there looking for a uh, wild game deer, elk, whatever you might be able to find. Okay. We're gonna do some pine moss cooking. You've heard of the Hawaiian luau's? Mm -hmm. Well, this is our version of it, and it's gonna be very <laughs> <Okay>. exciting. <laughs> And we're going to have a dance challenge that we're going to invite you to participate in. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not a good dancer. I'm always entertaining for the wrong reasons when mm -hmm. I'm dancing. See how it goes. All right, great. So, Thomas, let me get this straight. We're going to turn this pit into an oven. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. It's an age-old uh, cooking process. We got pine moss. This is the pine moss off the... That's the pine moss. That's the pine moss right there, yeah. It's like a really bad toupee. It does look like a bad toupee. I'm telling you what, you don't want to wake up with that. <laughs> no. So we got this ancient Indian fire fire starting kit. You got an ancient, oh, yeah. look at that. Oh, yeah. What is that right no, there? No, that's cedar wood, actually. Cedar, cedar wood, wood. Okay. So you can start rubbing those two together. Just get the fire yeah, going? Yeah, just get the fire I'm, going there. Tom, this is not... <laughs> I, well, you kind I of start you know, however you want to do it. <laughs> I don't know. The traditional uh, big lighter. Uh, All right, here we go. <laughs> you guys were advanced, Thomas. We were advanced, I'll <laughs> you tell you what. You must have traded with my people. Yeah, that that must have been, yeah. <laughs> now, I yeah. notice you're very carefully placing oh, yeah. the sticks it's, there, it's, Thomas. Is that the idea? Here's the practice. Here's the practice. So, as it burns, it's going to start heating up the rocks. Now, is it the rocks that are actually going to be the, doing the, the cooking The course? rocks will be doing the cooking, yes. When my grandmothers were alive down in Warm Springs, they would do this every 4th of July, and they would cook a bear. It's got to be done fast. 
and we were too much in the way there, so the old ladies pushed us out of the way, told us, get out of the way here now, we got to get this done. Well, you know what? It's a little role reversal. You're going to be your grandmother. I'm going to be you. Oh, so you yeah. just tell me if I ain't moving fast okay, enough. Great. Get out of the way. It's got to be very, very clean and take out all the impurities and stuff. It's about a two-day process to, wow. to make the moss. And usually what we do is we soak it overnight. Wow, look at that. See? It takes a lot of impurities out, too, also. But then it, uh, it's just water there's something? It's just water, yes. This looks like everything that lands on your plate when you go vegetarian. That's well, not I don't, a vegetarian. It, it reminds me of spinach. It reminds me of spinach. Yeah, that's what it you know. reminds me of, yeah. yeah. Just, how often would they eat moss? Was it, was it a regular part of the diet? I, mean, I think it was more like a uh, delicacy, perhaps. Right. You know? It's really sweet when it's cooked. So now we got a piece of um, unbleached muslin. Now, what are those? These are uh, pine needles. They're pine green, needles? Green pine needles, yeah. This whole procedure smells good. You got cedar, pine needles. Pine needles. Then give it a good squeeze. Give it a good squeeze. Then pile it onto the pine needles. Now, this is going to cook down to a small little cake. It's going to cook down because all the matcha is really um, compact down when it cooks. So now it's ready to go. This is going to be the barrier to provide steam it's dirt and uh, brown pine needles. Kind of be careful. Don't be sloshing it all on yourself. But you but want it mixed right over? Mix like it. you want that pine needle yep. mixed right in there? Mixed right in there. Spread out all the coals. Look at that. Holy moly. We got to save a little bit of this uh, fire. Got to have the same fire from inside the pit that goes on top. Name of the so, game is the same flame. Same flame. Same flame. We're going to have to go move really quickly, so we got to enlist the help of some, some uh, volunteers. Damien? Damien? Yes. Jess? Yes. Thanks for helping yeah. out. So we're gonna spread these down on the on the coal. This is like a bingo hall, Thomas. Just dropped it on top there? Just dropped it on top. Woo! Here, hold this on here. We're gonna send some smoke signals. Okay. <laughs> Dinner's on, is that what we're sending? Okay. <laughs> oh, we're getting the big guns in again. You know, Thomas, with the police drive by, this looks really suspicious. <laughs> All this, and we get one little cake. And it's worth A darn good cake, though. Darn good. <laughs> All right. Cook it from the top down now. How long do you want that fire to burn on top? Overnight. Overnight? Is that going to be enough? Well, it's enough to get started. We'll spread it out. Then will put more wood on there, then it'll burn. Coming up, stalking deer. And how to pick a bow that will work for you. All right. <laughs> Do you have a one pound bow? <laughs> Do you have no. maybe a boomerang I can use or something? Hello there and welcome back to Fish Out of Water in Oregon. I'm visiting the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation. And if I do say so, it's going quite well. Because I can hardly wait to taste our earth oven pine moss. It's been nearly 48 hours of washing, squishing, pining, wrapping, burying, baking, and finally unveiling. I wonder what it's going to taste like. Tastes like chicken. Uh, chicken yeah. <laughs> you know, interesting. Uh, it's not as sweet as I thought it would be. My mom used to make it, put a little bit of honey in there, maybe some mm. walnuts. She cut them into slices and roll them in uh, powdered sugar. So there are a lot of different ways you can have mm -hmm. this then. Yeah, actually. But I can see sort of spicing up a little bit. In mm -hmm. fact, I was thinking, this might make a really good condiment. <laughs> and don't worry, these are 100% venison. Mmm. Got to try that. Different. It's like a deer fell in a bunch of moss. Rolled in it. <laughs> Rolled in it. I like yep. it. Five deer. Maybe six. I'm supposed to be doing some tracking. I'm here to meet Rob. I'm told he's an expert tracker. Hey, Rob. Hey, Don. Good news. Already found some tracks. Mission accomplished. Uh, I don't think so. No? Not the kind of tracks we're looking for today. OK, well, you're in charge. What do I need to do? Well, it looks like you're from the city here, so I think we're going to have to get you duded up into some hunting clothes. Okay, as long as you don't change my hairstyle. What are we going to be tracking today, Rob? Well, we're going to be looking for some deer, deer. and uh, some elk, too, if we're lucky, and possibly even see some turkey. Wow, are we even going to get close to them? I'm light on my feet. I don't know if I'm that light, though. We'll see how good a job I can do to get you in on them. Okay, well, you got your work cut out for you. <laughs> we're coordinated, yes, too. We I are. like that. We got the nips for the season. Swing it over the top. Okay. Oh, I just biffed myself in the nose. You ever done that? I'm injured. Nope. 
<laughs> we got a hunter down already. We've got uh, a couple bows here. Let's go ahead and start you with the bigger one here and, and see how you do it. Now, which one would you use? I would use this one. Just grab it with your fingers and see if you can pull it back. <laughs> okay. Um, have you ever marketed this as a, as a workout tool? I think there is something <laughs> like it, because I don't even know if I can pull this sucker back. Wow, that's 75 pounds? 72 pounds. 72 pounds, yep. wow, it feels like 75. Yeah, this bow here is slightly smaller. It's, uh, it's 65 pounds. All right. <laughs> Do you have a one pound bow? <laughs> Do you have no. maybe a boomerang I can use or something? <laughs> I've got my son's bow. Oh, okay. This is 45 pounds. Oh. Okay, you know, there's a, uh, a little catch there where if yep. you can get it past that, yep. you can pull it a little easier. Yeah, there's a relief there for you. So your son, he's got to be what, probably about 25, 6'4"? He's 13. Biggest kid in his class, I guess, right? Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> that was kind of my, my Goldilocks moment, <laughs> you know? Too hard, too hard. Still kind of hard, but I can do yep. it. Okay, you lead, I'll follow. Okay. There's a couple deer right there, Don. Yep. So Rob, why do they call them white-tailed deer? It's probably a big legend or story behind that, I guess. Well, Don, it's because they have white tails. When they're, when they're nervous or anxious, they'll lift their tail in the air, and uh, it's all white on the underside of their tail. I don't get it. I like when they stop and kind of check you out. Is that what they're doing? Yep. Yeah, they still haven't figured out what we are, so. You know, they're curious. They want to find out what spooked them. I think they're, they're trying to get a good gaze at a, a real hunter. Yeah. I think that's what they're thinking. Yeah. You can see right right here, there, there's a good trail. That's a deer trail there. And if I've been paying attention, which I haven't, there's a lot of cover right there, right? There's a lot of cover right there. All right. Yep. As we climb, get different vantage points, you can usually see different things, so. So now that we're here where the action is in the octagon, as I like to call it, what are you going to be looking for as we move along the trail? Well, as we get up here, we'll start cutting some sign. We'll see uh, some scat. We'll see uh, some tracks. Scat, that is what I think it is, right? Yeah. Cool. Watch out for the bear sign. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Don, this is deer scat here. That's it right there. Yeah, this is deer scat. It's uh, smaller in size. This is elk, uh, elk scat here. Uh, it's slightly larger. There's also some turkey. There's some Jeez. turkey sign right there. This is like Woodstock for animals or yeah. something. It's all just right there in a little. Did they ever use the scat for anything else? Was it useful for stuff? Well, my grandpa used to tell me that if you had chapped lips, you take a fresh, fresh piece of, you know, deer scat and you rub it on your lips, and it keeps you from licking your lips. So, looks like you're a little dehydrated there. You know, even though it's windy, it's amazing. My lips aren't too bad. Oh, okay. My lips aren't too bad. Right. Yeah. There's still a bunch right in front of us. Bunch of turkeys up there. Shoot, I scared them. Rob, we didn't get anything, saw a few things, but uh, I need to know, what would it take to be a great bow hunter? Patience. Patience? You know, it's called hunting and not killing. So, you know, you can be successful uh, on a hunt while you're archery hunting without actually having to take something. Coming up, if you want to dance with success, you got to dress for success. I'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Don, and thanks for coming back to Fish Out of Water in Oregon. I'm experiencing the traditional life of the Umatella Indians. And I'm getting a touch nervous. I got a feeling I'm about to experience some impossibly difficult challenge <laughs> that is brutally hard to complete. <laughs> hey. So I hear there's some slick style dancing going on around here. Oh, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. 
Really hated to give up that outfit, man. I haven't worn it since 79, but I think I'm a little better dressed now for what we're doing. So Thomas, what, what are we doing? Traditional dances of the Northwest area here. We've got the duck and dive. I'm actually good at the duck and cover myself. You've, you've seen me, so hopefully this will be a little more natural for me. Okay. Yes, and uh, you're, you're going to be instructed by uh, two capable young fellows right here. We have their, your teachers. We have uh, Ernest Morning Owl Ernest? and Marcus Looney. They'll Don? be your teachers. And... Marcus, Ernest, and Marcus. OK. What's my footwork here? I'm always into the, the footwork. Sort of a just two steps. What am I doing there, Marcus? Two steps. Two steps, so like tap with the toe? OK. I'm low. I gotta be low. You threw some, uh, some steps at me there I wasn't ready for. I, what, what do you listen for when you get that stop? There's a stop in there. How do you know that that's coming? Uh, it's just a feeling. <laughs> 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 you, just, you just plant your foot or are you doing something, uh, something else? Plant your foot and then duck. Plant your, oh, that's the duck. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you plant your foot and duck. Okay. When I hit the drum once, I get, that represents a cannon fire that's coming out. So that's when they all duck. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. But I hope I get extra points. I was just ducking and diving. I was retreating there. Uh -huh. So I hope you, <laughs> hope you guys recognize that when we did. Retreating. What do you think, Thomas? Well, I lost fish. I think you're ready to go on to the next <laughs> challenge. <laughs> Well, Don, you've been here on the Umatilla Reservation for a while now, so we're going to put you to a test here to really find out if what you've really learned from our people here that you can take back to the city with you. You're going to test me on what I've learned? I don't even know where we are right now. Well, we're sitting inside a traditional Thule Mat longhouse that was used by our people here along the Columbia River and Plateau. OK, lay it on me. OK, this is your challenge. You're going to have to be in a dance competition. That dance, that was, uh, that was killer, man. Those young guys were really putting me through my paces. But what can I do, right? You're not going to let me go until I do it, right? You can't leave the res until you do that. But you know what? I think I was doing good against those young guys. I've been practicing. I think I got some moves. I think I can take those uh, young guys this time. Well, go forth, my lost fish. <laughs> hey, Thomas. Sir, I didn't mean to sneak up on you there, did I? <laughs> so what do you think? Yeah, all right. You're ready for your challenge now. You know, you didn't tell me it was going to be this breezy. I would have hit a tanning salon or something like that. You got to <laughs> tell me these things, man. Well, we took it easy on you this morning with, yeah, well, uh, where, with the, the boys. Yeah, the kids? I've been working. Well, I want to go head no. to head. I want to show those kids what I got, man. No, nope, ain't happening. You're going to swim with the big fish now. We brought in a panel of uh, very well-known dancers of the Northwest the, the style, and that's your You're challenge. putting me against these guys? Yep, they're professionals, yeah. These guys are grown-ups. Yeah, that's right. I'm, doing, that's, I'm, that's I'm a, still at the, I'm at the junior level here. What are you doing to me? Making you jump the shark. Oh, man, man. It's, well, it's about time we jump the shark on the show, I guess. <laughs> these are our judges. They're going to be uh, critiquing you. They're going to be picking a winner out of this. This is a competition level dancing, so this is a time to let the inner animal out. You're throwing all this <laughs> pressure on me, man. Jeez, OK. All right. My, my guns aren't enough caliber to keep these up. If they slide down, are the uh, oh, judges yeah. going to dock me points? Never, never take a 22 when you're hunting don't, with a 30 30 Don't take right? a pea shooter yeah. to a gunfight, exactly. OK, well, you yeah. know, I mean, I'm flexing constantly. Don't worry, but this is all the right. best I okay. can do. All right. Duck and dive. Duck and dive. <laughs> Thank God it's over. Double beat time. What? Double beat? Twice as fast? Oh, great. <laughs> 
You did really good. I don't know, the, the judges don't look happy. <laughs> you know, you're gonna be the final judge, but I need to know from the judges how, how they think I did. <laughs> what, what is that? Does that mean he's, he's dead at sunrise? What does that mean? What, what's the chief say in there? <laughs> All right. Russian judge, Russian judge. There's always a... Thumbs up? You did all right. Well, you got a thumbs up. You got a good job. And good I'm kind of shaky on there, so... <laughs> what do you think overall of, of how I did? You definitely earned your um, ketchup potato chips, and I'll throw in a bag <laughs> of uh, popcorn twists. Oh, there you go. That's there not you bad. Go. That's how good you That's done. a Umatilla A+, plus, I think, right That's there. right. That's <laughs> it. All right. If I was an actual member of one of the confederated tribes of the, of the Umatilla Indian Reservation, what would my traditional name be? What name would you give me? Well, right now, I think we'd call you Floppin' Fish. <laughs> <laughs> Drummers, dancers, thank you very much for everything. Judges, I appreciate that. You are very kind. You are very kind overall. <laughs> I've had a blast, uh, okay. Thomas. All righty. I'll see you there, Lost i got to go uh, stretch out, <laughs> towel off, lay down. I'll see you sometime soon, though. Thanks okay. for everything. The Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation are working together in a way that lets each of them preserve their own unique culture and identity. It makes me realize that in the city, we rely on a lot of different people to make things work. Maybe if those of us in the city understood that we're like the Confederated Tribes, we're not just a collection of strangers and individuals, we're a community. And that's a lesson I'll take with me on my journey through life. The one thing I regret about being here on the Umatilla Indian Reservation is I didn't get to do any fishing. And I love fishing because it's so easy. You just set your line out and relax. It's nice. Unless you get some stupid suicidal fish that thinks your face is a target. Did I mention how much I hate fishing? I hope that fish wasn't spawning. Tell me you gotta come up on the price. Wait a minute, it's my broker. Oh, that, what do you do? Sell. 20 shares. Hold on, my agent. Yeah, you got it. No, no. I'm talking about sleigh bells. I'm in Oregon. What do you think? There's no sleigh bells around here. 